Thank you very much, Christine. Um, should I say all protocol observed? Apart from my ED, there are some political officer here. Aspiring, eh? All right, thank you very much. I'm Dr. Noreb Mujisha. I work with the Uganda Cancer Institute, and I am in charge of actually cancer prevention services, but we started a program that we call Comprehensive Community Cancer Program uh, to, to provide cancer awareness, cancer early detection, and other cancer prevention services. I, I would love to start from where everything starts, you know? Uh, what, what is cancer? And, and I know many of you, we've engaged many times, but I don't want to assume that everyone knows what cancer is. But before I go further, I should appreciate all media houses and media people for selling the gospel of cancer. You know, which, which, which of course we know many people out there believe it's a death sentence, but at least you've sold the facts as we, we share them. So what is cancer? And I want to tell you that whoever is listening or watching, that question is not just for a layman. Even on hospital wards, doctors and students keep asking what is cancer, but you need to know that cancer is, is a disease that results from the body itself. Cancer doesn't come from outside. I hear many patients saying, Ovuka wa cancer we demu. Cancer si kawuka. If you, if you don't know Uganda, cancer is not a germ, it's not a virus, it's not a bacteria. So cancer is a disease that results when a body cell changes and becomes a cancer cell. Now when you say a dangerous bend is a bend which is dangerous, we haven't defined it. But interestingly, that's what cancer is that everybody can potentially develop cancer because the body cells can change and become cancer cells. But in essence, usually, it's one single cell that becomes a cancer cell and produces other cells that are cancer cells, and this person suffers from cancer, the disease. And I, 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 I hope that you know somebody listening or watching appreciates this. Because we have many times when people abandon cancer patients in the hospital and they say, when I'm on a cancer ward for a long time, I, am, I may contract cancer or I may catch cancer. Cancer cannot be transmitted from one person to another. I hope that is clear. And usually the trillion dollar question that people ask is, what causes cancer? For many cancers, we cannot identify a single cause. Not even for many cancers, but for all cancers. But again, for all cancers, usually there is a genetic, there is a genetic change that is responsible. And I want you to know that I'm choosing my words carefully, not to confuse anybody. So for any cancer to develop, usually there is a genetic problem and I'm calling it a problem not to confuse again, but some of these genetic problems can be inherited, but majority of them develop in an individual as this individual leads their lives. So that's why we talk about cancer risk factors. And many times we label the cancer risk factors as causes to make the public appreciate that, you know, these risk factors are important. I hope that makes sense again. So usually what happens is this cell, and I use an example of the breast, this cell in the breast turns into a cancer cell. It divides to form new breast cancer cells. So the person gets a swelling in the breast that is actually a breast cancer swelling. And this can happen anywhere in the body. So when we use the word cancer, it's, it's a general phrase for all these diseases that behave that way. And therefore, cancer is not one disease. You know, I know when we have a problem with, a, with one of the cancer machines, or one of the machines we use to treat cancer, you read on the headline, the cancer machine is not working. But there's nothing like a cancer machine. Eh? 
because to treat cancer, we use different machine. I hope that makes sense again, you know, because it's important that the media fraternity appreciates this because you communicate where we are not. You write where we are not, and we are happy when you post things that we haven't read through because that's the only way we can get information across many times. But I want you to appreciate that cancer is a number of diseases that can be anywhere in the body. And I hope that is clear again. So what are the commonest cancers in Uganda? Now, the number one commonest cancer is cancer of the cervix. The cervix is, is the, the, the lowermost end of the uterus, eh? which we commonly say the mouth of the uterus. This is the part in a woman that commonly develops cancer. And again, I am saying developing cancer because the cancer begins there in the cells of the cervix. Number two is cancer of the, at the moment, actually number two is Kaposi's sarcoma, which is a cancer that commonly manifests in the skin, but it can also manifest in the lungs, in the intestine. And number three is cancer of the prostate. Cancer of the prostate is the commonest cancer in men. Does that make sense? In Uganda, it's the commonest cancer in men, but cancer of the cervix, Kaposi sarcoma, are the top cancers in Uganda. And number four is cancer of the breast. Now, before I go further, I want to let my brothers who are here that men also suffer from breast cancer. Because many people think that breast cancer is a cancer for women only. And I usually tell men that if you don't have a breast, you, you need to come in a private room and I find out why you don't have the breast. Because also men have breasts. I hope that is again clear, the top commonest cancer. And why these are important for us to know is the three of those four are actually very, very preventable, but also can be detected early. Because the biggest problem that we have in this country is because patients who suffer from cancer come late for treatment, or, or they come when the cancer is already advanced. And I should maybe again throw some little light on that, because when we say the cancer is advanced, eh, I said cancer begins from one cell becoming a cancer cell. If this happens in the breast, this cell divides to form two cells, the two form four, four form eight. If you did some mathematics, you can imagine eight form how many? You know, 16, 32. And eventually, what results is a swelling that contains cancer cells. But because these cells are cancerous, they multiply at a very high rate. So the, the cancer swelling actually grows at a very high rate. And it also has the potential to invade normal tissues around that, 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 that swelling. So when it invades these normal tissues, the cells can break off and move in the bloodstream or in what we call a, a lymphatic vessels. Lymphatic vessels are vessels that drain into the lymph nodes. If you know Sanjababu in Uganda. Now, it's, it's by this means that cancer spread from where it started to other parts of the body. Now, when it has spread that way, then we say the cancer is advanced. Usually when it's early, it's much, much easier to treat because you can do surgery, remove the swelling. But when it has spread, it means you need to give treatment that can, 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 can be distributed into the whole body in order to go and destroy those cancer cells that have spread. Again, I would wish that every person who is in the media fraternity appreciates this, what we mean when we say the cancer is advanced. And, and so it's important that we know these cancers that can be detected early because when you do regular screening, you are able to detect these cancers early, provide treatment early, and therefore improve what we call outcomes or help these patients with these cancers be able to, to survive for a long time. I hope again that is clear. 
Now, I want to tell you what we are doing at the Uganda Cancer Institute to make sure that we detect these cancers early. We have cancer awareness, which we are doing now, and, and I hope all of you know that we are giving this information so that we share it with the people. And then we provide cancer screening services Monday to Friday at the Uganda Cancer Institute. We also do community outreaches, and we provide awareness in the community, and also provide cancer screening services within the community. This is all aimed at detecting these cancers early, providing treatment early, so that we can help patients with cancer be able to recover and survive. And I must emphasize that actually cancer is, is one of, of the curable diseases. You should know that cancer is one of the curable diseases. And I'm sure that among us here, we have relatives who have actually survived cancer for over 10 years. So, so, so it's important that we all dispel this myth that cancer is a death sentence. If we catch it early, we treat it early and properly, actually many patients can recover and survive cancer. I want to stop there and, 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 and I will be able to answer some questions. Thank you very much.